Hello, Michael. It's Jody. Hi. Sorry about the phone tag. That's okay. Um, I'm not calling you about the litigation directive. <laughs> I'm calling about um, the other unpleasant one. Um, the uh, deferred prosecution agreement thing and SNC and so on. I wanted to pass on uh, where the PM's at. Um, so, um, our intelligence from various sources is that this, the company is getting to a very serious point now. Uh, the board has asked uh, consulting firms for options for the board for their next meeting, which could be selling out to somebody else, moving, you know, uh, various things. Yeah. So, and it seems to be seems to be real and not not a bluff. Um, so there's a lot of things that, like another rising anxiety, as you can imagine, about uh, signature firm and job loss and all that coming after the Oshawa thing and what's going on in Calgary and whatnot. So the PM uh, wants to be able to say um, uh, that he has tried everything he can, uh, you know, within within a legitimate toolbox to try to head that off. Um, so he's he's quite determined. <laughs> Quite firm, uh, but he wants to. He wants to know why the DPA route, which Parliament provided for, isn't isn't being used. And I think he's going to find a way to get it done, one way or another. So um, he's in that kind of mood, and um, I wanted to be aware of that. Okay. So um, he's. I don't know if he's going to call you directly. He might. Um, and he's willing, I think he's thinking about getting um, somebody else to give him some advice. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't want to do anything that's outside the box of what's legal or proper. Um, but his understanding is, you know, the DPA tool is there. Uh, and you have options that we've talked about before to ask for reasoning from the DPP uh, or even to take over the prosecution of the uh, he, he just wants to understand more at this point why the DPA route isn't being um, taken up in this route. So he's thinking about bringing in somebody like Bev McLaughlin to give him advice on this, um, or to give you advice to make you know if you want to feel more comfortable that you're not doing anything that's inappropriate or outside the. I'm one hundred percent competent. I'm doing nothing inappropriate. Yeah. No, but would not be um, if you decided to use some of these tools under the law. Because um, I think he feels the government has to have done everything it can before we lose 9,000 jobs in a signature Canadian firm. Right. So, um, I'm again, I'm, I'm confident in where I've, I'm at and my views on SNC and the, the DPA haven't changed. This is um, a constitutional principle of prosecutorial independence that Michael, I have to say, including this conversation, previous conversations that I've had with the prime minister and many other people around it, it's entirely inappropriate and it is political interference. And I, the Prime Minister, obviously can talk to whomever he wants, but what I am trying to do is to protect him. I can have a conversation with Beverly McLaughlin. I can call her right now. Um, I'm just um, issuing the strongest warning I can possibly issue that decisions that are made by the independent prosecutor are their decisions. We gave, we gave her and them the tools the additional tools, I made it very clear at the cabinet table and in other places that these tools are the discretion of the prosecutor and everybody agreed to that and there was no guarantee that there would be a DPA in this or any other case. So we were treading on dangerous ground here. So I'm going to issue my stern warning um, because I can't act in a manner and the prosecution can't act in a manner that is... Um, not objective, that isn't independent, I can't act in a partisan way, and it can't be politically motivated. All of this screams of that. So I'm actually uncomfortable having this conversation, but I'm happy to talk to you. I, I can 
I'll call Beverly McLaughlin. I can't even imagine her feeling in any way, shape, or form comfortable with interfering with the independent prosecutor. Okay, but I mean, I I think that's where people are talking past each other. I mean, I think the the, the view that he's formed, which which I think I I share, I'm not the lawyer in any of these conversations, and Elder and others, is um, it's not interference. The statute specifically has these other provisions in it that allow you to ask questions of the DPP that's and that's provided for it's not interference but I but I would but I would have to issue a directive I would have to gazette this the prosecutor the director whom I know and understand after having several conversations with her about another directive on HIV that I issued she is a by the book person if this is gazetted this will be, and this is not, and I, I hear you on the jobs and wanting to save jobs. Yeah. I mean, we all want to do that. This is, goes far beyond saving jobs. This is about the integrity of the prime minister and interference. There's no way that anybody would interpret this other than interference if I was to step in. It doesn't matter how I would look in doing that. I mean, I'd be a mockery. And that's not the problem. The bigger problem is what it would look like down the road for the government is not about jobs, and I know the jobs are important, so I don't want anybody to misinterpret that I don't care about those jobs. This is about the integrity of the government and recognizing that there is the ability to issue a directive under the Act. Um, it is still irrespective of the ability of that I have to do that. One, it's never been done before. But two, this is going to look like nothing but political interference by the prime minister, by you, by everybody else that's been involved in this, politically pressuring me to do this. Well, I mean, I, 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 I feel like I actually really feel uncomfortable having this conversation because um, it's wrong. And I hear, and the Prime Minister obviously can call me. Like I said to you, I will have a conver- I'm going to call Beverly McLaughlin and have a conversation about her, with this, with her. Well, I mean, of course it hasn't been done before because Parliament only created the instrument barely a year ago. So no, no, no. This I instrument mean, that, that, was, you mean the directive. The directive yeah. on a specific prosecution has never occurred, and this happened because Harper brought this law in, as you probably know, um, ten years ago, the directive has or the the DPA has never been used because it just entered the criminal code back in September. So I understand that this is the first case. The prosecutor sent me what's called a section thirteen. You told me that you hadn't seen it before, but I've read it and I've reread it, and the prime minister's office has a copy of it. She explains in it why she's not doing it in this case. We have to. I have to be unless it's something outrageous, comfortable with the decision, recognizing it's the first one, likely, and obviously I'm confident, wasn't entered into lightly, made the decision not to enter into a DPA with respect to this case, and she explained why. So when did she convey that to you? She issued the Section 13 back in September when I was down in Australia for, okay. for okay. whatever that, for the five eyes. And then all of this trans I mean, I have a timeline of every single conversation and everything that everybody's said to me on this. So, um, I f- like, anyway, I, I just, again, I, I'm surprised that you and I are having this conversation, but I'm just saying that I really feel uncomfortable and about the appropriateness of this conversation. Okay, I, I understand that, but I, I mean, I think his view is he's not asking you to do anything appropriate or to interfere. He's asking you to use all of the tools that you lawfully have at your disposal. Um, I, 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 I know I have a tool under, under the Prosecution Act that I can use. I do not believe it is appropriate to use it in this case. Okay. All right. I mean, then that's, that's clear. Um, Well, I mean, he's, he's in a very firm mood about this, so... Um, 
Does he understand the gravity of what this potentially could mean? This is not just about saving jobs. This is about interfering with one of our fundamental institutions. This is like breaching a constitutional principle of prosecutorial independence. So we no, can. I don't think he sees it as that. I mean, well, then nobody's explaining that to him, Michael. Like this is this is we can stand up in the House of Commons and on Norman on totally appropriately on Norman, on extradition, and we can talk about the rule of law. Um, the, the cases aren't dissimilar. The principle or the integrity of how we act and respond to the tools that we have available and what we should and shouldn't do, I'm, again, I just, I don't know. Okay, no, no, I, mean, uh, I respect where you're coming from. I, I just think I, you know what, I, like I, I hope that you do, because I don't think anybody respects this. I mean, the, the conversation that Jerry and Katie had with my chief of staff, and I have it, like she wrote down what they said, like saying that they don't want to have anything or hear any more about the legalities, but want to talk about jobs, entirely inappropriate. Okay, well, I mean, I wasn't... Well, we, I have it. I have it all. It's just... But, I mean, you're not just the Attorney General, you're the Minister of Justice in the Cabinet, and, you know, but you have context within which you, you exercise your, your roles and responsibilities. Like, I, I'm not seeing anything inappropriate here, but, um, I mean, I, you know, uh, you're right. No, the, the, and the PM, I mean, I, I think people are talking past each other. He, he, uh, I think the way he sees it and the advice he's getting is, um, you still have things that you can do that are not interference and, and they're still very much lawful. So uh, It's not that they're not lawful. The perception and what will happen is it will be deemed political interference from day one when people were talking about why are we entering into or putting a DPA regime in place. Everybody knows it was because of SNC. Whether that's true or not, that's what people think. Um, yeah, but whether it's, it's a tool used in lots of other countries, though, fair. for these kinds of purposes, and, and especially if there's been a change of ownership or management of the company that's that's being prosecuted. I mean, it, it is a it is a public policy tool. Fair, but in our MCs, all the way up. And in the law that we changed, we gave the director of public prosecutions the discretion to enter into the DPAs and a judge to oversee the regime. There is no guarantee in any particular case, this one or the ones that will come, that they'll enter into the DPAs or think it's appropriate to do so. And that's what we consciously made the decision on when we, we decided as a cabinet to enter into this process and I amending, amending the law. Anybody that can talk to Kathleen them about the context around this, or about, or to get her to explain why she's not. I mean, I guess the company has dealt with her directly, but the company has. And Michael, they, they, there was a preliminary inquiry. I'm still trying to get an update on what happened at the preliminary inquiry. Like uh, the suggestion that I made ages ago, of which Jerry talked to you about in uh, Montreal, was. Like if nobody from the company ever contacted me or sent me a letter expressing concern, had that happened, I would have done what I believed appropriate would have been to forward that letter on to the the director of public prosecutions. I think they've made direct representations to the prosecutor though, on, and they tried to make a public interest argument and, and so on and so on, but they they just they get the impression they're not being listened to. So yeah. Hmm. All right. Um, well, I don't. You know, I, I, I'm going to have to report back on uh, before he leaves. He, he he's in a pretty firm, firm frame of mind about this, though. So I'm a bit worried. Um, <laughs> a bit worried about what? Well, I, 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 it's not a good idea for the prime minister and his attorney general to be at loggerheads. Well, I I feel that I'm giving him my best uh-huh. advice. And um, if he doesn't accept that advice, then it's his prerogative to do what he wants. But I am trying to protect the prime minister from um, political but interference you, or perceived or otherwise. I understand that, but I, I mean, he doesn't have the power to do what he wants. Uh, all the tools are in your hands. So, 
<laughs> okay, so then, I, I mean, I, I'm having, like, thoughts of, like, the Saturday Night Massacre here, Michael, like, to be honest with you. And, and I don't, this is not a great place for me to be in. I don't relish being in this place. But what I am yeah. confident of is that I've given the Prime Minister my best advice to protect him and to protect the constitutional principle of prosecutorial independence. Okay. Um, all right, but I mean, I'm worried about a collision then because he's, he's pretty firm about this. I mean, I, I just saw him a few hours ago and, and this, is, this is really important to him. And Okay. Um, I don't know. I just, I, there's not much more we can cover now then. Um, I understand where you're coming from. Uh, um, the, the sec, the, sorry, the section 13 argument or response from Kathleen, you're saying Elder has that or had, had a version of that? The Prime Minister's office has had it since September, okay. since I've had it. September. Okay. That's important. That's new to me. So, okay. All right. Um, They'll tell you that they haven't received a copy of it. Elder and Mathieu said it to me when they came to my office. Um, mm-hmm. But we have documented evidence in terms of emails, et cetera, where that has been provided. So they do have it. Maybe they've misplaced it. I can, I can send it back over to them. But I know that Jessica asked the other day when she was over at the PMO's office. And what did they tell her? That they didn't have it or they'd never seen it? Or? I, I'll have to ask. I'll tell you exactly what they said. I'll have to ask her. I think, well, my advice is Jessica should send it to Elder then just to make it, like, triply sure that they have it. Okay, I'll get her to do that right now. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks for calling me. Thanks. Thanks for calling me back so quickly. No problem. And, uh, we'll see. He's still around tomorrow. Um, so um, there's a number of things on the go right now. So. I'm waiting for the All big, right. the other shoe to drop. So I'm not uh, under any illusion how... Um, the Prime Minister um, has and gets things that he wants and um, I'm just uh, I'm just stuck doing the best job that I can. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye.